The last of Newton's laws is uh, called Newton's third law. Well, at least the last of the ones we're talking about now. Uh, Newton's third law is actually fairly straightforward in uh, how it's phrased, and yet uh, it's pretty neat with what it does for us. Uh, so let's just write it, um, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. That's the key thing here. Now you have to understand what an action is and a reaction, but basically those are just uh, forces. So here, this is, this is Newton's third law. There it is. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Now, I think this is explained very well with some examples. So let's say, um, yeah, I just saw a video of someone on a skateboard today. Um, uh, so let's say, let's say someone is on a skateboard. Uh, so here you are, you're standing on your skateboard. Well, I guess you'd have to be a little bit taller, but uh, you get the idea. Here's a person here. And there's a wall here. Now with, uh, the wheels aren't really very even sized, but oh well. Let's say you're on your skateboard and you push against the wall. Think carefully what happens to you. You push one way and yet you go the other way. So in this case right here, you push to the right, but the wall pushes you to the left. So this was you giving an action, in other words, a force going to the right, and the wall, it turns out, pushes you back to the left. And that's why it sounds counterintuitive, but if you push against the wall, you actually go that way. A lot of people don't really give it any thought. They just know this because they've been on Earth and experienced things like uh, maybe you're on skates or a skateboard or something like this. It could be something as simple as jumping. I mean, think very carefully. I mean, if you ask someone, how do you jump? Well, they'll probably just say, well, I just, I just jump. I mean, I just, I just jump. Now, think very carefully about what you do, though. In order to jump, you want to go up. And yet, what do you do with your legs? You actually push down. So to jump, you push, you push down, and the earth pushes up. So in this case, you know, you're pushing down on the ground, and the ground in that sense, or we should be careful about this, the earth technically has an opposite reaction with you, and that's why you actually go up. It sounds really strange when you think about it. Everyone knows how to jump, and yet the physics of jumping is not actually so simple, right? Because you have to, first of all, if I want to push down, or first I probably have to bend my legs, and only then can I push them down. And if I push down kind of quickly, then I can actually have enough to actually jump. Right? And that's actually because I push down, and yet I go up. Uh, another example could be maybe you're in space, uh, like how a rocket works. So a rocket, uh, let's just say I've got a situation here. So here's a rocket. I'm going to draw a really, uh, I guess, some sort of rocket here with some sort of stuff coming out here. Um, actually, it's really cool. I don't know if you've heard about it, but there's a group in Copenhagen called the Copenhagen Suborbitals. It's just basically two guys, and they've decided to make their own rocket system and send a guy up into space. And uh, they're doing it all kind of out of their backyard, essentially. They're really clever guys. They've got uh, lots of clever people helping them out, but it's, I think it's amazing. So they're not NASA. They're not a whole uh, company. Uh, they're not a whole country doing this. They're just two guys in Denmark called Copenhagen Suborbitals. And what they're trying to do is they're making a really, really small rocket. The idea is going to be that uh, the rocket's about just a little bit wider than one guy like this. So it's going to be really, really claustrophobic. But the idea is that they can go up into low Earth orbit at least. That's why it's called a, well, it won't even be an orbit. It'll be a suborbit. That's why it's called a suborbital. It's still really cool. They'll be technically in space for, you know, a little bit. Uh, but the idea behind this, though, people initially thought that if you went or you wanted to go to space, rockets would never work because there was no air uh, that, you know, you could push against. Because if you think about it, uh, a lot of people think, okay, well, uh, here on Earth, 
If you want to go in a plane, what do you do? Well, you either have um, you know, a propeller that moves the air backwards and then you end up forward. That's again another action-reaction thing, right? The propeller pushes the air that way, so the plane goes that way. People thought you needed a medium or you needed a material to move in order to go somewhere. And people thought, well, in space there's no air, so you'll never be able to use your rockets. But of course that's not true, it works great. And that's all because of Newton's third law. So what the rocket does is it throws out material. See, there doesn't need to be air to resist it, because in space, well, there's either little or no air. So you just throw out material. So the material goes out this way. So right, you just throw things behind you, in this case, fuel of some kind. But ion drives, they just throw little ions, like little pieces, like little things just get thrown out. It doesn't matter what you're throwing out. You could throw people, I suppose, but you'd run out of fuel really quickly because you wouldn't have many people left and they wouldn't be very happy. So instead you bring fuel and you just throw out fuel that way. And if you throw them out that way, then they push you that way. So that's why even though you throw out the stuff this way, you end up going this way. That's really cool. So Newton's third law explains lots of things, simple things like jumping, but more complex things like uh, rockets or even skateboards or whatever.